Ha, kids! All right, let's talk about Kepler's third law. Um, you should have noticed from the simulation that as the radius gets bigger, now really when we're talking about radius, we're really talking about the average radius. Because I realize again, if here's the sun, it is going around an ellipse. So when we say, oh, we're really talking about the average of the smallest to biggest. Okay, hopefully that makes sense. Um, the period gets bigger. And this is true with anything orbiting something else. Okay, that if you have a bigger radius, uh, then you're going to have a bigger period. Okay, you are supposed to graph, um, kind of look at the graph some real data. And depending on how you set it up, if you set it up like this, r and t, so this was average radius and this was the period, you should have got a relationship that looks like this. Now, you might think just from what we've done, you might think, oh, oh well, that's a square relationship. But when you actually looked at the app, you should have found that it was, it was like this is proportional to t to the three halves. So it was like a three halves, a 1.5 relationship. Or if you graphed it like this, you know, you should have had something like this and you might go, oh, that's a square root, but it's not actually a square root because it's actually a two thirds relationship. So like R to raised to the two thirds. In reality, and this is what, this is the part that I think is so impressive. What Kepler did is he, my guess is he looked at, he first graphed this and goes, went, oh, that looks like a square relationship. And then put t squared down here and it didn't quite work. So then he had to just keep manipulating the data until it finally did work. And as it turned out, it was when, when he graphed this, that's when he got a straight line. So really that this idea of r cubed over t squared, this is going to be a constant. Okay. This is Kepler's third law. So that this idea of radius cubed over t squared, no matter what you have, anything that you have in your, in your system, that this ratio is always going to give you the same number. That's pretty cool. Okay. Now I want to show you a couple things. Um, Kepler didn't know, understand why, so he went to, at least the story goes, is that he went to Newton and said, hey, can you tell me why this is? And Isaac Newton invented calculus to figure this out. Now we're going to solve this. I'm going to show you how we can solve this a much easier way. We're going to pretend that the orbit is actually a circle. Remember, a circle is a special ellipse. Why are we doing it this way is because if we do it with a circle, then we just need algebra. If you do it as an actual ellipse and you need calculus and this is just an algebra class. So let's say we have a planet and the force of gravity is the only force acting on it because it's in orbit. So I have this, if I, so my FBD looks like this. If I do my next step, which is to write my equation, I say, well, my net force, but in this case, the net force is really the centripetal force because it's moving in a circle is equal to Fg, because that's the only force acting on it. Well, how do we find centripetal force? We say mv squared over r. How do you find this? Universally, you go gmm over r squared. And hey, look, right away, I can cancel some stuff out. I just canceled out a little m. Which m is this? Well, and this is why I would recommend you make it a big m, a little m, in this, age, in this case, that's the big M, that's the little M, so I just canceled out the mass of the planet, which is good because if this is going to be true for anything orbiting, you know, my sun in my solar system, well, then the mass of this thing can't affect it, and it doesn't, okay? So, so far, we got that. Let's do a little more algebra. My R, one of my R's goes away, so I end up with V squared equals... G M over R. Now, if this thing is a circle, because you know, it's a, obviously that's a perfect circle because I minored in art, that uh, this planet is never moving towards or away from the sun. 
Well, if it's never moving towards or away from the sun, then the force here is only causing it to change direction, which means it's moving at a constant speed. Well, if something is moving at a constant speed, how do we find its speed? You just go d over t. Well, remember, what's the d around a circle? 2 pi r. What's the time one time around a circle? Oh yeah, that's the period. So let's take this and plug it in here. You get 4 pi squared r squared over t squared equals g m over r. Does anybody see it yet? Does anybody see it yet? I know. Physics is amazing. All right, so let's do some algebra until we get this relationship. Um, so I'm going to bring it up here so we can fit it. But I, if I cross multiply it, I get r cubed over t squared equals, okay, g m over 4 pi squared. That's why it's a constant, okay? The reason it's a constant is that, you know what, for anything orbiting in my system, well, g is always the same. Why? Because it's the universe of gravity constant, 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11. m is the thing that it's orbiting around. Well, everything's going to orbit around the same thing. In this case, it's the sun. 4, well, 4 is always 4, and pi, pi is always pi. So the reason that this relationship is a constant is that, okay? All right, let me pause and say something. I do not want you to memorize this. If you look on your phone machine, it's not there. I want you to be able to solve it, okay? This, what I did here is not hard. I just said FC equal FG and I did some algebra, okay? I expect you to do that. When you, when you try to memorize something, you don't understand anything. And then you're also, chances are you're going to get it messed up. You're going to be like, well, is it R squared? Is it R cubed? Is it T squared? T cubed? Is it what? Uh? No, just set it up and do the math. Okay? Um, but yeah, that is why it's going to be a constant. All right, uh, I'm going to pause and then we'll come back and I'll show you how we can use this. Bye, kids!